Squad doesn't underestimate your intelligence or talk down to you. It's true for its graphics settings as well. A few wrong clicks and your PC will be begging for mercy. I spent some time fine-tuning my settings and saw substantial FPS gains, even on my humble and dated system. Now is an especially good time to revisit this, as with the recent release of version 7.0, Squad is now compatible with NVIDIA DLSS technology, which, if you're using an RTX series graphics card, can yield major performance and visual gains. Considering how popular the RTX series was, this is going to be huge for a lot of players. For all the complaints people have about optimization, you really have to applaud something like this. Now, I'm no expert when it comes to this type of thing. Whenever it's time for me to build a new PC, I basically just black out and wake up 48 hours later, naked and covered in thermal paste, wondering how I got there. But I thought it might be helpful to do a quick and dirty rundown of my settings to help some people that might be struggling with their frames get a little bit more out of their system. A few things before we get started. This is geared towards those with a somewhat dated or middle-of-the-road system. If you're using a GPU with less than 6GB of VRAM, nothing in this video is going to help you. It's time for an upgrade. I've got an AMD Ryzen 5 CPU and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060. My system was pretty good, like, three years ago. You should start by updating your drivers for your graphics card. NVIDIA actually just released a new set of drivers and specifically cited Squad's added DLSS compatibility. You also can't go wrong with a fresh install. Uninstalling and reinstalling Squad can flush out any corrupted files and piled up bugs hanging around from years of Steam updates. Do your FPS frame rate checking on Goose Bay or Fallujah or one of the more difficult woodland maps. You'll also want to be checking your FPS while in a live game, not on Jensen's range. You'll typically see FPS drops during a firefight, which is when FPS matters the most. That's what we're tuning our settings around. You'll also need a point of reference, so boot up the game and check your FPS before you tinker. That way you'll be able to see what gives you a boost and what doesn't. This is all about trade-offs between performance and fidelity. To do this, bring up the console in-game and enter the following commands. Stat FPS and Stat Unit. It's also probably worth bringing up the Steam Overlay settings and using that FPS counter as well, as if you enable DLSS, the in-game readout might not show the FPS gains that you get from DLSS based on how that algorithm works. These commands will tell you whether you're bottlenecking around CPU or GPU. Squad is a very GPU-intensive game, and a lot of that is shadows and textures. If there's a setting that I skip over or don't mention, it's either that it's largely irrelevant to FPS, or that I don't have any idea what it does and I'm afraid to touch it. Alright, let's get into it. Full screen mode can sometimes give you a small bump. Resolution should match your monitor's native resolution. Resolution scale is a luxury setting. Keep it at 100 for now and only revisit it at the end if you're happy with your frames and want to juice things up a bit. Only turn on VSync if you're seeing screen tearing. Test this by running right next to a wall and look for a line glitch. Scope image clarity. Set it to prioritize clarity unless you're going to enable DLSS, in which case it forces prioritizing AA. More on that later. Anti-aliasing can probably be left on high for 90% of you. DLSS. Here's the fun one. This is only applicable with NVIDIA RTX cards. Support for this was just added and basically allows Squad to leverage the AI that RTX cards have baked into it. It stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling, and as far as I understand, it uses an algorithm to generate additional frames and fill in the blanks instead of generating an entirely new frame. You'll want to experiment with this setting for a while, as it's got plenty of options, but for starters, you can't go wrong with the auto setting. When I first turned my DLSS on, it forced my scope settings off of prioritizing clarity and onto prioritizing AA, which caused them to look blurry and crummy. The solution for me came from turning my DLSS on into the DLAA setting and tinkering with my scope resolution scale up to 125 and upping the DLSS sharpness to 1.00. If your scopes look bad after turning on DLSS, trust me, spend some time massaging things to get your scopes back to where you want it, but leave DLSS on. It's worth it. The overall results for me were an increase in frames per second and an increase in the quality of the image, which is basically just magic. Thank you, OWI. Thank you, NVIDIA, and thank you to the AI hive mind that will inevitably take over the world. For dynamic mesh quality, leave it on high. If you're really hurting, you can turn on low quality environment. For shaders, put material quality on high, but if your GPU is hurting, set it to medium. Enable tessellation should be off. It's a big GPU hog. Now, textures are a big portion of your GPU usage. Start at medium, and if you're happy with your frames, try putting it on high. Uncap texture pool size. Leave this off unless you're experiencing significant blobs forming on static assets. 
If you uncap texture pool size, your GPU will allocate a larger chunk of your VRAM specifically for textures. If you record your gameplay like I do, the encoding is handled by your GPU and can cause issues with this. Basically, start with this off and revisit it after you've played Goose Bay and you notice textures turn to mush or rocks turning into gray blobs. Shadows. Medium is fine for me and frees up some GPU RPMs. I personally don't notice much of a difference between high settings in-game. Contact shadows. I prefer to leave this on. Particle quality. I run this on cinematic and I've basically tuned my setup so it's allow me just to do that. In a lot of my footage, you'll see me stare at explosions in slow motion and just start drooling. The explosions and particles can be jaw-dropping. I'm personally willing to take a hit on performance to squeeze as much majesty out of the explosions as possible. In my opinion, the work that OWI has put into sound design and explosion particles is top-notch. I think it's worth it. If your system creaks and groans whenever an RPG goes off next to you, try stepping it down to epic or high. Post-processing. I set it to high and have no issues. The lens flares can be pretty amazing sometimes. The rest of this stuff is just personal preference. Apparently a lot of people hate motion blur, but after testing it out, I've found a little blur to be much more natural and organic looking. If you're still struggling or having glitches, the key settings of Jiggle are DX12 to DX11, textures, shadows, no two systems are alike, and you'll need to spend some time caressing all those buttons and sliders. You can do most of this in-game without needing to restart, so get the tinkering and watch your FPS ticker. And remember, I'm barely computer literate, so don't get mad at me if you match my settings and then your PC catches on fire. Alright, if you found this at all helpful, subscribe. If you don't, and I find out, I'll start sneaking into your house at night when you least expect it, and gradually, over time, I'll change all your squad settings while you're sleeping slowly gaslighting you into believing that you have early onset dementia. Thanks for watching, and happy hunting.